Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, and right now I'm very excited because I have a guide about one of my favorite characters in the entire game, Taya. Now, Taya is a very powerful sub-DPS unit that I believe a lot of people, in fact the vast majority of the player base, understand that he's a powerful character, but a lot of them also a little bit underrate him, in addition to the fact that he's not really talked about a lot. That being said, he got a new skin recently, which looks really awesome and really cool, and that serves as a very nice reminder to players that this this character exists, and yes, he is a very powerful sub-DPS unit and can also assume multiple other playstyles that are effective to varying degrees. So, this is a great opportunity for me to make a guide about him, not only because I like him, but because I genuinely think he is a very, very powerful character, and he is also extremely flexible and will only get better in the future of Genshin Impact as the game's lifespan keeps to grow. This character has a lot of potential. So, let us get into the guide and talk about what makes him so good. Starting off with Kaya's talents and abilities, this section is not going to be long whatsoever because his kit is ultimately very very simple and very straightforward to play and understand. However, do not let the simplistic nature of his kit fool you into thinking that he is limited by his simplicity. In fact, that simplicity in of itself is a very very powerful tool that Kaya can utilize to be an extremely flexible unit and one that is very very effective at doing what he does. So, with that being said, let us start with Kaya's kit. First of all, we have his normal attacks, Ceremonial Blade Blink. Now, there isn't much special about these normal attacks. He does have a teleport blink as the fifth hit, but that's just a fancy animation. Doesn't really do much. Uh, when it comes to the multipliers, out of all the current available sword users, Kaya does have the highest uh, normal attack multiplier, at least so far in the game. There is a very minor nitpick with uh, when it comes to Kaya's uh, normal attacks. And that is the fact that his charge attacks, uh, well, push him backwards. And this is the same issue that you notice with Kuching, where if you spam charge attacks with Kuching, not only are you going to be knocking small enemies away from you, but you're also dashing away from where you are knocking them. And Kaya has the exact same problem, except Kaya does alleviate that issue a little bit through his exploration passive. Now, Kaya's exploration passive might be, or might fool you into thinking that this is only useful in the open world, but just like Kazuha, just like Hazel, just like Razor, who also have this passive, this is a very, very powerful passive when it comes to Spiral Abyss, when it comes to actual real combat. Because being able to reduce the amount of stamina you consume while sprinting and dashing is extremely effective, especially if you are playing with a hyper carry or a unit or a team composition in general that requires a lot of stamina, or someone like Hu Tao, for example, who needs stamina in order to charge attack. This passive can be super, super useful, as we'll talk about later in the team compositions towards the end of this video. Video. Kaya's elemental skill Frostna deals damage in front of him in a cone, generates 2 to 3 elemental particles depending on RNG, most of the time it will be 3 particles, and applies 2 cryo units to the enemy's hit. This can be significant because 2 cryo units is actually pretty big for uh, breaking elemental shields. In addition to the fact that this is a low cooldown skill, which means if Kaya is being played on field or if he is being played in quick swap team compositions, and as we will learn in the playstyle and team composition sections, Kaya's many of his teams are quick swap teams. So having a low cooldown uh, skill at 6 seconds, generating 2 to 3 particles while also dealing a reasonable decent amount of skill damage multiplier is pretty damn good. Furthermore, this ability gets further enhanced and amplified and upgraded by his two ascension passives, Cold Butter Strikes and Glacial Heart. So Cold Butter Strike, it allows him to heal for a portion of his attack whenever his Frost Na, his elemental skill, hits enemies. And this is going to be 15% of his attack, which means most of the time, depending on how much attack your Kaya has, he's going to heal between 250 to 330 HP per enemy hit. It is nothing too crazy, but a reasonable amount of sustain, just a nice upgrade, just a nice bonus on an elemental skill that is already good. But his second ascension passive, or rather his A4, his fourth ascension passive, Glacial Heart, is where things get spicy. Because this increases the amount of energy generation that his elemental skill provides by by two additional elemental particles when Kaya hits frozen enemies or when Kaya freezes the enemy with Frost Knot. This makes Kaya a supreme battery for cryo units in a freeze team composition, in addition to also significantly reducing his own personal energy recharge requirements, because you have to keep in mind that now Kaya is not only generating four to five elemental particles whenever he's hitting his elemental skill on frozen enemies, but also Kaya's kills or ascends with energy recharge 
and this means that Kaya, in most situations, is self-sufficient when it comes to energy recharge, which means, by extension, you build very little ER on him, and you focus mostly on damage, and this is where his primary power comes into play. This character, you can just pump him full of damage, just give him attack and crit damage and elemental mastery if you're playing him in a reverse melt, and have him do a lot of damage from off field. And most of his damage is going to come from his final ability, Glacial Waltz, which is the primary and the bread and butter portion of his kit. Glacial Waltz is a simple ability. Again, just like all of Kaya's kit, it generates three icicles around Kaya. These icicles rotate and they hit enemies applying one cryo unit every 2.5 seconds or every three hits. Now, this does increase with his uh, constellations, which we'll talk about in the next section, but the duration of the ability uh, on a baseline level is 8 seconds with a 15 second cooldown. Now, considering the fact that, again, Kai is mostly played in quick swap team compositions, this is not an issue. And further, as we go further into his constellations, not only does the ER requirement go down with his C6, but also the amount of duration, the duration of the ability, increases dramatically with his C2 situationally. This ability does a lot of damage, trust me on this one, but there is a caveat to it. The radius of his elemental burst is actually quite small, which means most of the time you want to stick to uh, characters or teammates for Kaya that are melee or characters that can stay in close proximity, close range to the enemies. Generally, you do not want to play him with someone like Yoimiya, someone like Ganyu, who want to stay far away in order to avoid being hit and interrupted so that they can dish out their damage. This is a minor, uh, I suppose, drawback to playing Kaya, which means you have to stay close to the enemy, be in the nick of the fight, but if you can do that, his elemental burst does a lot of damage, especially at C6, and if you're playing him in a reverse melt team, trust me, you will see this does so much damage. And now let us talk about Kaya's constellations. And before I start this, actually, I should add this disclaimer. Kaya's constellations are extremely, extremely expensive to obtain. This applies for both whales and for free-to-play players. If you are a whale, then you're gonna have to ultra, ultra spend in order to get lucky and obtain Kaya at C6, which is definitely not worth it because it is significantly, on average at least, more expensive than getting a C6 five-star unit or it is expensive through other means by costing a lot of time for you to buy each and every single constellation from the monthly shop rotation uh, every time the constellations are available in the shop. So unfortunately, Kaya's constellations, while they are good, they are, I would say they are decent, they are very, very expensive. So you should know this, and especially considering the fact that Kaya himself is a free character that every person in the game has access to. Uh, I could have actually gotten his C6 last month, but I was too busy playing Star Oil, so I actually forgot that it was on the shop. I wish I had it for this guide, but it is what it is, whatever. His C1, his first constellation, increases his crit rate against enemies affected by uh, Cryo, at least only his normal attack crit rate, actually, by 15%. This can be significant, not in a physical playstyle. It is useful in a physical playstyle, but if you are playing Kaya, with Chongyun and Shunha as an on-field driver or as an on-field carry, then yes, this actually becomes a significant buff because now Kaya's normal attacks are doing cryo damage and they do a lot of cryo damage because Kaya gets 40% crit rate from Blizzard Strayer against frozen enemies, he gets 15% from Cryo Resonance, 15% from this crit, uh, from this crit rate buff from his C1, in addition to the 5% crit rate that every character has as a baseline. That is 75% crit rate that Kaya has for free. That is an entire build's worth of crit rate without taking into account a crit weapon, which means all you need to do in a free steam where Kaya is the driver with Shenha and Chongyun is build him with attack and crit damage, which means, yes, this is significant, but outside of the team that I just mentioned, this team archetype, this very specific team archetype that I just mentioned, this actually is not a good constellation. In a situation where you play him with Chongyun, Shenha, and then an additional Hydro character for to get the freeze reaction, this is good because his normal attacks will actually do significant cryo damage. Outside of that, this is a honestly a subpar constellation. His C2 increases his burst uptime by 2.5 seconds, 
every time an enemy dies while Glacial Waltz is active, and this increases all the way to 15 seconds. Now, if you are fighting a tanky enemy or a bunch of tanky enemies, then this constellation is not actually going to be that useful. Against multiple enemies, this is very, very powerful, makes Kaya one of the highest DPS units in the game. Against tanky enemies, this value of this constellation goes down. His uh, C3 is going to be the elemental skill upgrade. Uh, this is honestly a mediocre constellation. The damage upgrade isn't that crazy because the primary utility of Kaz elemental skill isn't really its damage. Three uh, levels on the elemental skill that already does decent damage is respectable. Nothing too crazy though. It's a mid constellation. His C4 is a shield. Uh, it is complete garbage. It procs when Kaya is low on HP. And most of the time it's going to be useless because you have to be on Kaya for, to proc this ability. So uh, honestly, this is a garbage constellation. Not much to say about it. It does have defensive utility, but practically speaking, Speaking, there will be other t teammates in the team where you're going to be playing Kaya that will provide him with enough defensive utility to where this constellation is rarely that useful. But his C5 is a very powerful constellation because as we said before, Kaya is very similar to characters like Shangling, characters like Yelan, characters like Beidou, where the vast majority of his damage, most of his DPS, is going to be coming from his elemental burst which means three levels of his elemental burst is very, very significant, similar to another character that you might know as Raiden Shogun, where her C3 is, in most situations, her highest DPS constellation, even higher than her C2, yes. And the same thing applies for Kaya. His C5 is going to provide him with a lot of damage thanks to the fact that most of his damage already comes from his ult. His C6 is a very powerful constellation and the fact that I missed it last month makes me very sad. You generate an additional icicle for Kaya, which means his ult now generates four icicles instead of three. This means the following. Because his ult applies one unit of cryo every three hits, Having an additional icicle means you hit more, because you have now four icicles attacking, you do more damage, and you apply more cryo, because each icicle has an ICD of 0.5 seconds, and they apply cryo once every three hits, or once every 2.5 seconds, but the more realistic value is going to be once every three hits, because Kaya's burst hits often, and the delay is almost synchronized perfectly with the 0.5 second uh, ICD cold. Furthermore, you also get 15 energy, flat energy back when you cast your ult. And when you see something like this, when you see free energy when you cast your ult, in your head, translate it to more damage because with this constellation Kaya generates somewhere between two to three elemental particles on his six second cooldown skill against a frozen enemy he generates four to five elemental particles if his skill hits a frozen enemy he already ascends with energy recharge and now his burst the cost of his burst goes down from 60 to 45 at this point Kaya basically needs zero energy recharge which means you build Kaya 100% with attack and damage. This makes Kaya an absolute monster, an absolute behemoth at dishing out elemental burst damage, which makes Emblem of the Severed Fate one of his best artifact sets, which we'll talk about later in the artifact section. Now, again, his constellations super expensive to get, but if you do get them, they are effective outside of from his, from his C1, which is super niche, and his uh, C4, which is uh, honestly just complete garbage. All of his constellations are pretty damn decent, and some of them are actually broken. All right, let's talk about Kaya's playstyles and rotations. So, there are three primary team archetypes that Kaya is known for, but I need to take this moment to remind you that Kaya is a very, very flexible unit and can be used across multiple different team compositions, many of which are not going to be mentioned in this video just due to the sheer amount of team possibilities that you can build with Kaya. Because again, his ultimate ability is a simple AoE cryo damaging ability that follows you around and can snapshot any buffs that are active while Kaya casts the ability. So again, most of the time, I personally find myself using Kaya just as a filler fourth slot when either I do not know what to uh, put in my team 
Or when I do not even bother to think about what team I want to make, I just slap Gaia as a filler fourth slot, and he usually just generally works very, very well. The only times where you want to avoid using Kaya is in situations where the element of Cryo is going to be actively griefing your team, which is honestly going to be really rare, all things considered. So... The vast majority of Kaya's team compositions are generally going to be sub-archetypes of the three main ones that I will talk about right now. Starting off with his physical playstyle. So, as I've said multiple times across this video so far, I do not recommend physical Kaya personally, not because it is complete garbage, it's the reason I do not recommend it is honestly because Kaya's other playstyles just do way more damage and provide a lot, lot more value. And what I mean by that is physical in itself, I have talked about this across many different videos before, is not a very well established uh, mechanic in the game right now. There are very few physical DPS units that are dedicated for physical, and uh, one of them is no longer being played as a physical DPS unit, and the other is basically just a dead uh, DPS unit that exists on the sidelines. But uh, if you want to use Kaya as a physical DPS, he does have some uh, utilities to facilitate that playstyle. Again, decent normal attack scaling. C1 gives him crit rate on his normal attacks. Uh, Cryo Resonance gives him additional crit rate in order to uh, build more damage. And also he has sustain on field from his first ascension passive. But again, do I recommend physical? Personally, I do not. So the other archetype and the other major archetype that is actually very, very good this time is going to be a freeze team composition. Now, as the audience watching this video right now, I will not insult your intelligence by trying to teach you how to play a freeze team due to how simplistic and how brain dead most freeze team compositions are. You just apply cryo and hydro and then swap to your damage dealers and do the damage. However, there is one team archetype that is actually worth showcasing and it is a reverse melt team or just a general melt team with Kaya. Now, uh, this team composition is the most basic one, where we have Kaya, Bennett, Chongling, Rosaria. The idea is extremely simple. You have three characters, which are Kaya, Chongling, and Rosaria, that have ults that can snapshot Bennett's buff. You apply Bennett's buff, and then you use those three characters in order to snapshot his buff and do a lot of damage using those quick swap units. Uh, now, of course, Rosaria can be replaced by units such as Shinha or even Ayaka, but again, this is the most basic team composition, and the rotation goes as follows. We're gonna start with a Goba, and then we're gonna swap into Kaya, E with Kaya, Bennett, Q, Ult, Otto, Rosaria, E, Ult, Shangling, Ult, Kaya, Ult, make sure everything is inside Bennett's burst, and then we basically, from here onwards, we just repair the rotation until the enemy is going to die. Now, of course, remember that the damage that you see in front of you on screen is not indicative of your actual Kaya's damage or any of your character's damage. Uh, damage in Genshin Impact is very, very much dependent on not only artifacts, but also weapons and even the enemies that you are fighting. Therefore, I need to also include this disclaimer every time I have a showcase in my videos. Uh, but again, this is a very, very solid and powerful team composition, a very, very powerful team archetype. In fact, Melt Kaya is my favorite uh, playstyle to play him. Melt, in general, is the way that I think Kaya was designed to be. It is the one where I think he is the most effective. Now, of course, he can be used in Freeze. He is a, an excellent battery for Ayaka in Freeze, but I really personally like the Melt uh, archetype, and uh, it is a very powerful one indeed. Kaya ascends with 126% energy recharge from his ascension stat at a baseline level. Furthermore, if your Kaya is at C6, then you naturally require less energy because he refunds 15 flat energy while casting his ult, which means his ult effectively costs not 60 energy, but 45 energy at C6. If your Kaya is C6 in a Freeze or Mono Cryo team, do not build energy, do not worry about energy, he will always have his ult up, assuming that you cast his skill twice in a rotation. Furthermore, if your Kaya is below C6, then now we can talk about his energy recharge requirements. In a Freeze or Mono Cryo team, your Kaya is going to be looking at somewhere around between 150 to 180 energy recharge. Outside of a Freeze or a uh, Mono Cryo team, his energy recharge requirements go from 170 to 210. But again, keep in mind that Kaya already ascends with 26% uh, free energy recharge that he gets from his ascension stat, so you are not actually building that much energy. And if you have his C6, then again, 
you reduce all of these numbers by 20%, which means you can easily build a lot of damage on this character. When it comes to artifacts and artifact stats, Kaya has three primary artifact sets which he can take advantage of and use to great effect. The first one is going to be Emblem of the Severed Fate, and this is usually going to be your go-to in any team composition that does not involve either Mono, Cryo, or Freeze. The reason is, well, Emblem of the Severed Fate increases the elemental burst damage of the character wearing the artifact set, especially the 4-piece, or specifically rather the 4-piece, and the 2-piece set gives you 20% energy recharge for free. Now, earlier in the video I did establish that Kaya does not need energy recharge in most of his team compositions, he does not need that much of it. That being said, this piece, the two-piece set of uh, the Emblem of the Severed Fate, already gives you 20% energy recharge for free of the two-piece, and Kaya ascends with 26% energy recharge from his Ascension stat. This means that Kaya has 46% energy recharge baked in into his kit just by having this four-piece and his Ascension stat on its own. This is excluding any additional uh, energy recharge stats that you might have on your artifacts uh, from the individual pieces themselves. This means the following. Kaya is almost always going to be getting value out of the four piece of Emblem of the Severed Fate, and it will buff his primary source of damage, which is going to be his Elemental Burst through the four piece effect. Now, it is also worth mentioning that if you do not have a good four piece of Emblem of the Severed Fate, well, first of all, go farm a good four piece of Emblem of the Severed Fate because uh, it is really good on not just Kaya but on many, many other characters. Uh, but let's say you do not have a good uh, four piece and you do not want to farm it for some reason. In that case, you can actually use a two piece, two piece combination of Noblesse and. Uh, Blizzard Strayer. I will have all of the two-piece, two-piece combinations in the top left corner, uh, towards the top left corner of the screen. Uh, they will be available throughout this section in order for you to pick and choose from the two-piece, two-piece combinations. That being said, another four-piece option that also works wonders on Kaya is going to be the four-piece Noblesse Oblige. Now, it is... It, here's the thing with Noblesse Oblige. If you're going to run Kaya on a four-piece Noblesse Oblige, you're probably running him as a support that is specifically designed to buff Ayaka. In that situation, you're also going to be running him with Favonius Sword, and the reason for that is because Ayaka in Freeze requires a lot of energy because Ayaka herself does not generate that much energy and her ult is an 80 energy cost. And Kaya himself, using this build through this build through Noblesse Oblige and Favonius Sword, he's going not only to give the two-piece or four-piece Noblesse Oblige effect to Ayaka in order to buff her further, but he will also significantly reduce her energy recharge requirements by spamming his elemental skill and giving her a lot of energy through his A4 passive and through the Favonius Sword passive. He will also be doing some uh, damage from off-field. That being said, if you do choose to run him with Noblesse Oblige and Favonius Sword, keep in mind that Kaya's personal damage is going to suffer uh, tremendously, but the damage of the Cryo DPS unit, such as Ayaka, that he will be buffing will increase a lot. And the fourth and final uh, four-piece uh, set that Kaya can run, surprise, surprise, is going to be the Blizzard Strayer set. Let me see if, yeah, there we go. So the four-piece Blizzard Strayer set is the go-to for any freeze character. It just gives you a lot of very, very useful stats. Obviously, 15% cryo damage bonus, good on Kaya because he's a cryo character, but then you get 20% crit rate if uh, you're attacking a enemy that is affected with cryo, and that is further boosted to 40% crit rate if the enemy is frozen. Uh, again, the main stats that you want to focus on are very, very simple. You want cryo damage on the goblet, you want attack on the uh, sands, and you want crit rate or crit damage on the circlet, depending on what you need. Your stats on Kaya, generally speaking, uh, I personally can get away with 160 energy recharge it, across most of my teams, whether it's freeze or not. But for you, depending on the rotations, depending on how, ma how many times you quick swap and the enemies you're fighting, it tends to vary. Uh, I wouldn't really say this character is an energy hungry unit. He really is not. You can just focus on giving him as much damage as humanly possible and he will do a lot of damage. And speaking of damage, let us move on to the weapon section. Now, when it comes to Kaya's weapons, this 
the one that I've been showcasing across the video, the Black Sword, is a terrible, terrible weapon on Kaya. And the reality is that Kaya is a character that has a tremendously large catalog of viable weapon options that he can choose from. And as I have been saying across this entire video, Kaya is an extremely consistent unit and has multiple, multiple weapons in fact, I could make an hour-long video just talking about how many weapons Kaya has and all of the viable options that he can run. But for the sake of simplicity, here are two weapon rankings broken down top 10, top 10 for Freeze and for Melt. When it comes to playstyles that are outside of Freeze and Melt, you can essentially refer to these two criterias. It, do you need uh, elemental reactions outside of freeze other than freeze ones that uh, are similar to, for example, let's say melt? In that case, you want to focus on elemental mastery. If not, if your Kaya is just doing raw cryo damage, then you want weapons that have crit and attack. When it comes to a weapon like the Jade Cutter, you can see on the tier list that it has slightly different rankings depending on which playstyle you run. And the reason is because Primordial Jade Cutter provides a lot of crit rate. When it comes to Melt, that is very good because now Kaya, well, gets a lot of crit rate and does a lot of damage because he's going to crit consistently. That being said, 44% crit rate in a Blizzard Strayer set is very very bad because now you're over capping you you'll be overshooting on crit rate tremendously because keep in mind kaya gets crit rate from cryo resonance he gets 40 from blizzard strayer and cryo units in general just have very easy access to crit uh, buffs so having a lot of crit rate on a weapon like jade cutter is not actually that good Another option that you will see in a melt team composition, for example, is going to be Freedom Sworn or even Key of Kajna Suit. And while those weapons have slightly lower damage, uh, personal damage for Kaya, they also offer team buffs for the rest of the team. Now, a weapon like uh, Favonius Sword is, again, it has very, very low personal damage. But if you're running Kaya as a pure support for a hyper carry like Ayaka, then this weapon actually increases in value because uh, Kaya can now generate a lot of elemental particles to support or to recharge the carry who can then forego energy recharge for the uh well for the added benefit of building more damage uh, and uh, finally the most consistent weapon that you'll always be running on kaya the absolute best weapon alongside the primordial jet cutter and light of the foliar incision is going to be the mist splitter reforged and if you have the mist splitter then you can easily use it on kaya because it is going to be his best in slot weapon of course light of the foliar incision Primordial Jade Cutter and Haranga Pakufutsu are not going to be too far behind. Also, one final thing that I should mention, the Black Sword is a terrible weapon on Kaya. Uh, this weapon increases in value similar to all, all, all of the weapons in general. If you run Kaya as an on-field unit, all of the weapons that are focused on normal attacking will increase in value. For example, Light of the Foyer Incision and Haranga Bakufutsu will increase in value. That being said, Haranga Bakufutsu and Light of the Foyer Incision are already good weapons on Kaya, regardless of whether you run him on-field or off-field. But weapons like Akila Favonia, weapons like the Black Sword, they really lack uh, any real utility outside of their uh, their substats or high base attack in the case of Aquila Favonia. So if you're not running Kaya on field as a driver, then their value decreases a lot. And uh, the Ishin Blade from Kazuha's uh, Story Quest is actually a very good weapon on Kaya. If you are completely new to the game, or if, you, or if you are completely free to play and you do not have any of the options that I have on the list, then this weapon is going to be your baseline. It is actually better than the Black... Uh, what, what's it called? The Black, uh, Black Cliff Sword. Do not get that weapon. It's actually not good. Like a free weapon from Kazuha's story is actually better than it. So yeah, these are Kaya's weapon options. So now let us move into the team composition section and end this video. When it comes to Kaya's team compositions, the sky is your limit. This character is very flexible, and this is something that I tried to stress throughout this video, and I'm gonna repeat it again. Because Kaya's elemental burst follows you around dealing cryo damage and applying the cryo aura to facilitate further reactions, this makes Kaya a perfect fourth filler slot for a team composition where you either don't have a good fourth unit or you simply don't know who to use. Kaya works perfectly. In a sense, to some capacity, to some degree, 
He plays similarly to Zhongli, where with Zhongli you press uh, the elemental skill and then swap off of Zhongli and forget that the character even exists on the team. It's, it is similar to some degree with Kaya, where you press Kaya's ultimate and then swap off and do your thing with your other three characters. But because of that, there isn't really a set amount of team compositions where you can run Kaya. He's just a free character that everyone has. He's a very strong sub DPS unit. His ultimate does a lot of damage. You can run him in many teams. If you have a uh, fourth slot that is empty, Kaya will fit the bill most likely. The only real situations where he wouldn't work are situations where Cryo is actively not uh, wanted. And that is not really his fault, that's just basic elemental restrictions. When it comes to Kaya's absolute best team composition, this is assuming everyone is at C6, including Kaya, and Kaya has Miss Splitter at R5, this is an ultra Leviathan team. It's going to be Kaya, Hu Tao, Sing Cho, Yelan. Again, everyone C6, this is Kaya's absolute best team in the game. But let's move into Kaya's actual, like, normal team compositions that people are gonna run. So. The first archetype that Kaya has established in the game is physical. Uh, if you're gonna run Kaya in physical team compositions, I highly recommend you play him with Mika. If you have Mika at C6, it's even better. Now, I personally, never mind, not personally, do not play physical Kaya. It's way, way better to play Kaya as a sub DPS as he should be played. Physical is not well established in the game yet. It is not a well defined mechanic and it, it performs much, much worse. It is significantly inferior to Kaya's other playstyles, which are melt and freeze, where his ultimate ability is going to do a lot of damage. Now, as of the time of recording of this video, this is true. In the future, physical might get a buff, it might become better. But now, it is not. Melt and freeze are the way to go. And when it comes to freeze, Kaya's most basic freeze team composition is going to be Kaya, Changyun, Singcho, and uh, Kazuha. This is the OG freeze team, and obviously there are many, many uh, variations of this team. You can use Rosaria instead of... Uh, uh, Changyun, where you forego the elemental infusion on Kaya's basic attacks in order to deal a lot of damage with Rosaria. Or you could also run, well, Kaya as a sub DPS where you build him full damage with Ayaka and Kokomi and uh, Kazuha. A team composition like this one is one where Kaya and Ayaka are going to be doing a lot of damage, but you have to keep in mind that both characters are going to need a uh, considerable amount of energy recharge, especially Ayaka. And to remedy that, you could actually run Kaya as a full battery, where you Kaya himself is not going to do a lot of damage. In fact, he won't do damage. He won't do damage whatsoever. You run him with four piece noblesse to buff Ayaka, and then you give him Favonius Sword. And this way, when Kaya freezes an enemy with his elemental skill Frostna, he's not only going to generate five elemental particles for Ayaka herself, which means Ayaka can forego building energy recharge for full sending damage, but Favonius Sword will also generate additional particles for Ayaka herself and the rest of the team. And the final team archetype that uh, Kaya can be ran in, the final major one, is going to be Melt Kaya. There are many, many team uh, compositions. There are many variations of these uh, of this uh, team. Uh, you have Kaya, Karozarya, Shangling, Bennett. You have Kaya, Shinha, Shangling, Bennett. You have Kaya, Shangling, uh, Bennett, and uh, then you could run someone like Changyun. You have Kaya. Shinha, Kazuha Bennett. Again, many, many possible possibilities. Just run the four that you want. It doesn't really matter who does the damage. The only thing that matters is that they do the damage. And it is very, very fun. It is the one that I personally like the most. And it is the one that I think is the most enjoyable. All right, everyone. You have successfully reached the end of this guide. And uh, my final closing statements about Kaya is that he's a very, very powerful sub-DPS unit. He genuinely does a lot of damage if you build him correctly. And he is honestly quite underrated for how good and how flexible and how easy to build he is. This is a free character that is accessible for everyone. Uh, he has multiple weapon options, can be used across many teams. So he should not be underused as he is uh, to this day. But, uh, to be honest, this character is very powerful. I think most people know that he is very powerful. It's just that not many use him because of the uh, starter character syndrome. Uh, one final uh, tip that I want to mention that I did not get a chance to talk about in the video is that 
with Kaya's ultimate ability. If you cast the ultimate ability and actually spin counterclockwise uh, with Kaya, you can actually increase the number of times his icicles hit the enemies if you just walk around and spin, which is funny because this is one of the few characters in the game where one of the core mechanics to increasing his damage is actually spinning around. Now, is this practical while you're actually fighting in a game? No, it's not. But it's a fun little thing to know. Um, if you want to do it, you can do it. I would not really recommend it, to be honest. It's just there. Uh, again, if there are anything that I forgot, any notes, any uh, further uh, comments or corrections, I'll leave it down below in one of the pinned comments. And uh, yeah, that's honestly all I have for today. Thank you all for watching and take care. See ya.